Have you ever thought about what if you've actually come here with a mission to change the paradigm and therefore you feel like a black sheep in the society or you find it hard to follow the crowd? Aristotle said something really interesting. He said, to lead the orchestra, you must turn your back to the crowd. And many of us may feel like we've come here to pave a new way. Like the crowd is lost and it's led by the blind. And we may choose to come here at this unique time to pave a new way. So for those who may find it interesting for their lessons, for their growth, for their evolution, may find this path as something to walk on, to learn from. And maybe you are the one that was born to lead. And it's not something new. This concept of chosen ones is not new. It's coming from all kinds of different ancient traditions. In all kinds of ancient traditions, they had this concept of souls who came here to lead, who came here to show the way. And those souls need to go through different stages of awakening until the final stage. So what is the final stage? The final stage is when an individual comes to an embodiment of service and integration. And we'll talk about the final stage. We'll actually talk about the stages we are going through until we get to the final stage. It's not about the chosen ones, like it happens just to certain souls. It happens to anyone who go on that path. And anyone who decides to go on that path is the one who chooses to go on that path. It's not like somebody will push you to do it. It's your internal choice. It's your choice of responsibility for your personal life. So one day you can become of service for others. And that is a great decision. For example, according to the work of Dolores Cannon, who was a past life regression therapist, some souls choose to incarnate on Earth during these times of significant change and transformation to assist humanity in its spiritual evolution and awakening. These volunteer souls are believed to have a specific mission or purpose to help raise the collective consciousness and bring about positive changes on the planet. And if you feel like for the whole time you, you couldn't find yourself doing what everybody else is doing, you felt like there is a different path for you. You felt like everything most people are doing is nonsense or is meaningless. And you're always rather inspired by something deeper by something maybe ancient or by something that holds within a greater sense of purpose, most probably you are the one. It doesn't mean that it makes you more important or that it makes you more special. It just gives you a sense of your inner fire, your inner purpose, your inner meaning. It maybe gives you a sense like this is why you've come here to do. And if that's you, most probably you will go through these stages. There are seven stages I want to talk with you today. The first one is awakening. This is the initial stage where an individual becomes aware that there is more to life than what meets the eye. It often involves questioning one's purpose, seeking deeper meaning and experiencing a desire for personal growth. It just happens spontaneously usually or we may go through something dark and it may activate this state or this um, stage where we start questioning everything. This is really important because in this state, we start also looking at the dark phases in our lives as something that holds within a purpose of a deeper awakening. And that is the first stage that is leading us towards the final stage. So if you are here right now, many people went through it already, but also right now, as I feel, there's a new wave that is awakening more and more people. And many people right now are awakening here and are coming across all kinds of helpful books that may guide you. And you may really start resonating with certain knowledge or certain philosophy that will lead you through this stage. And this stage of awakening will lead you to the second stage, which is a stage of seeking 
and learning. In this stage, the individual seeks knowledge, wisdom, and guidance. They may explore various spiritual teachings, practices, and philosophies to find what resonates with them. So, in this stage, we notice that it's not one philosophy that is the most important. It's not one book that will change our lives forever. It's like finding multiple different philosophies, usually connecting the core meaning from one philosophy to another and taking from them what may help us for our growth. So it may mean that you may be studying at this point all kinds of different teachings, all kinds of different uh, practices, just so you, f you can find answers to your questions. And this is really important stage because during this stage, we may feel a bit overwhelmed by noticing how much there is information outside of us, how much answers there actually is. And we may feel like we can't acquire all of that at the same time. But during this phase, we actually need to be really patient as everything is finding us at the same time. We shouldn't force this process of learning because learning is happening moment by moment and there are phases where or actually periods where we have to let go of learning so we can ground what we've learned right and we can put into practice what we've learned the second phase is really important and really overwhelming for many people so if you find yourself here at seeking and learning make sure that you come or in tune with your senses when there's enough of knowledge so you let go a little bit of learning and you pay more attention to implementing because a person who's constantly learning but not implementing will just expand his mind but not his experiences that's why we have to keep things in balance and moderation as much as you're learning, also keep practicing. That's what will expand your growth and will lead you to the next phase, which is the phase of purification. This is the next stage. This stage involves letting go of negative patterns, limiting beliefs and attachments. It's about cleansing the mind, body and spirit to make way for higher consciousness. In this stage, we start noticing what is not helping us to move forward. What is kind of pulling us back? In this stage, usually people recognize, oh, this, this food is not good for me anymore. Not because we've read it somewhere or we've heard it somewhere, but because we've started noticing that it is lowering down our energy. And that is really important state of awareness to notice what is helping us to grow and what is blocking our growth. In this stage, we also start letting go of certain addictions, letting go of certain attachments, maybe to certain people, maybe to certain ideas, and rather we start questioning it. We let go of certain way of living so we can make space for a new one. Again, this phase of purification, it's not an easy one because Every single day we may be fighting with falling into the old patterns and at the same time trying to implement the new ones. And I want to remind you this is the natural process of transformation. There are again periods, right? Life works in rhythms. There are times when implementing new things is really easy and we feel driven and inspired and everything feels like a natural flow. And then there are times when we easily feel magnetized towards our old way of living. And it's really hard to not do it, to not, you know, follow the old patterns. And we may fall back into the old patterns. It's nothing wrong here. And even if you fall into the old patterns, it doesn't mean that you will stop this process of evolution. Actually, you will expand it. Actually, you're you're growing, even though you're falling back into the old patterns, you're becoming more aware of your impulses that are pulling you back to the old. Like what kind of impulse, what kind of emotion, what kind of neediness is pulling you back into the old? And in the phase of purification, the most important part of it is awareness. To really just 
become aware of what makes you feel like you have to fall back into the old patterns. What is lacking in your life? Sometimes because we feel sad, we want to do something that in the past bring us more happiness or a higher state of satisfaction and therefore we fall into certain negative patterns that we regret later. But if we notice that actually because of our present sadness we tend to do something that is eventually negative for us, we rather than do the negative pattern we investigate our sadness. Why do I feel sad right now? Do I need to take more time for self-care? Do I need to rest more? Do I need to talk with someone? And that's how purification is happening. This phase is really, really important. So rather than going for old patterns, investigate the reason for them. Really important reminder. The fourth stage is inner healing. That's what purification is leading you to, towards the inner healing. During this stage, individuals address past traumas unresolved emotions and inner wounds. Healing is a crucial part of spiritual ascension as it allows for greater self-awareness and personal growth. We can't heal what we've never revealed, right? So we are paying attention to what may be still unhealed within us. What wounds are causing us to be or behave in certain ways? And usually in this phase, we are seeking for the tools that can help us to deal with that. Usually in this phase, we may seek solitude so we can investigate our inner world, like what kind of traumas we've been through and how the traumas affected us in the present moment. Like what kind of behaviors may or have started to evolve because we've been through those traumas. And usually in this phase, we come across books that talk about psychotherapy and emotional healing, vulnerability, certain psychological tools that can help us to become more aware of our mindset and negative thoughts and how to deal with all of that. In this phase, it's really important to to have boundaries in our lives, right? To not, you know, to say no to the things that doesn't resonate with you or that don't support this process of healing anymore. When you have certain toxic relationships in your life that are most definitely not supporting your process of healing, that you can slowly separate yourself from those people. During the phase of healing, many people start actually separating themselves from certain people. Not necessarily forever, but for a certain period of time. In this phase, often people also go to travel for longer periods of time, so they can recognize what is really happening within them. And this is an important phase for the process of healing. Actually, I was not aware that this was the initiation, but for me, I went to travel, me and my went to travel for half a year. We went into Spain. We've separated ourselves from family, from our friends, from anything known. Just so we've actually recognized how much we've been hurting, how much we through through everything we've been through, how much it affected us in our lives. And also during this process, we've recognized what is our inner calling. So you can't force to find your purpose or to find your calling. You have to go through the process that we're talking today about. And this video is so important because it can help you to address at what stage you may be right now. So you don't force something from another stage that may have to come and you're not there yet, right? You're on your own journey and all you have to do is to notice where you are so you can know what to do. The next stage that comes after inner healing is expansion of consciousness. And this is interesting because many people are seeking expansion of consciousness without doing the purification and inner healing and it doesn't work. So expansion of consciousness comes as the fifth stage in this process. As individuals progress, 
They often experience expanded states of consciousness, which can include moments of insight, intense intuition, certain spiritual, mystical experiences. They usually start uh, channeling great ideas for the improvement of their lives, but also for maybe for certain work they need to do. They usually experience a sense of calling. And this is the stage where we usually recognize, oh, this is what I want to do. In this stage, I've noticed I want to start painting. I want to be a messenger through art. I want to use an art as a vehicle of a message that can inspire people and heal people and help people. So this is a huge responsibility. Expansion of consciousness is It's not something to entertain your spirit, but actually to awaken within you a sense of responsibility. You're here not just to evolve, but also to lead. And this is an important phase that leads us to the next phase, which is the stage of self-realization. This is a significant milestone in spiritual ascension. It involves recognizing our own true nature, and the interconnectedness of all life. At this stage, we become more aware of what it means that we're all one consciousness, that we're all an extension of the source. Until there, or until here, we may know it as a philosophy, we may know it as an idea, and everything is an idea until we experience it and we find a deeper truth in it. That's why I always say to you, question everything you've heard, because nothing is the truth but what you experience. So doesn't matter what kind of books you read, those are all finger points, maybe to the truth, but the real actual truth is your personal experience experience, and how you choose to interpret it. And also even your interpretation depends on your knowledge that you acquire. That's why learning is so important. So we can start to look at things from other perspectives and therefore it's much easier to recognize what truly happened, what truly happened there. How you understand what you're moving through and self-realization can help you to expand this understanding. So this is a really big breakthrough that uh, happens to many people when they begin to understand what this interconnectedness really means and what's the importance of it. At this stage, we usually start to recognize that my healing effects on healing of others. For example, when I heal a certain family wound, something that was like in my family, we were not, uh, nobody was really emotionally intelligent. Nobody was able to express their emotions. And this is still a big weakness in our family. But as I've started expanding this, I've noticed that my mother started expanding this as well. And without actually any big change in our relationship that we had or any communication that we had, just as I've started healing it, I've noticed that the healing started happening slowly in my family as well. That's where we notice the manifestations of this inner connectedness. When we change something about ourselves, the whole world changes a little bit. And that's where we notice the importance of inner healing, because with healing of ourselves, we are healing the world. So this is really, really important phase for many people. And one of the most beautiful ones, because we recognize that really what I'm doing for myself, I'm also doing for others. And I want to treat others as I'm treating myself. And when we become more loving and kind towards ourselves, we will naturally become more loving and kind towards others. So it's not like I want to be kind to others because I've read a book of kindness. I want to be kind to others because I've experienced how beautiful it feels when I become more kind to myself. And therefore kindness comes from inner experience, inner knowing. And that is much more powerful than just reading a book and implementing something and living by the philosophy, right? We start to live by an example and that is really powerful. But of course we have to implement the philosophy to experience the the byproducts of it so we can come deeper into self-realization so everything leads to a certain 
point of awakening. And the process of self-realization leads us to the final stage. And the final stage is the stage of service and integration. In the final stages, individuals often feel a deep sense of purpose and a desire to serve others. They integrate their spiritual insights into daily life, empathizing, compassion, love, and service to humanity. So just reflect on what we've heard today, because when we try to understand our purpose and want to help others without going through all those phases, those may be just certain ideas and philosophies that may lack a deep part of our own understanding, like what is purpose? What is life's purpose, right? But if we go step by step, awakening, seeking and learning, purification, inner healing, expansion of consciousness, self-realization, we naturally awaken to a sense of purpose. And I know that because it happened to me and it happened to many people, many great teachers, many great leaders will tell you about this same process. We can't skip those phases, but we can train ourselves to be patient as we're walking the path. And the path may be unknown until we make it known, and that's what makes it an adventure. That's that's what makes a life an adventure. And if we train ourselves to see everything as lessons, we'll take nothing else from the past as wisdom and bring it into the future. And that leads to growth, expansion, and greater self-realization. And therefore, we can bring more value back to society. And that leads to service and integration. Of course, it doesn't end here. We are constantly becoming better and better and better at what we are doing. It's not like reaching this point and then you can just go off and party and enjoy your life, right? Here, service becomes a lifestyle purpose becomes a lifestyle like if you would ask any great leader like how can you do this every single day they will say to you because it's my mission this is my lifestyle i'm not thinking about working on it my life is it my life is learning studying and being a teacher being a mentor this is my life i'm not thinking about vacation anymore because every single day I am an example of what I'm going through. I am an example of my teachings. This is my life. Wherever I am, I am doing this, right? Because it is not exhausting me, it is filling me up. And this is the greatest state or stage we enter in and it never ends. It's an infinite journey, but this is kind of the final stage of the process you're going through. So really enjoy this process even though sometimes it may be hard sometimes it may be painful know where it is leading you know that it is just making you a better leader a better teacher a better whoever you are becoming healer mystic artist whoever you are becoming you know the best who you are becoming know where you are going and enjoy the processes each day is awakening within you something new. And each day you're letting go of something old. It is happening on maybe on micro level. So sometimes you may not really comprehend or or see what is happening, but still it is happening because life is all about changes. So my friends, I hope you found something valuable here. To anyone who may resonate with it, chosen ones, those who came here as volunteers, To anyone who came here with a mission to awaken yourself so we can help to awaken others, I hope that this work resonates with you. I hope you've enjoyed in today's painting as well. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Stay beautiful, stay magnificent. And thanks to anyone for supporting my art in our Etsy shop, I Draw My Passion. The link is in in the description of this video. Thank you so much. With that, you are supporting this mission. So, thank you, my friend. Till next time, one love.